So the first machine learning method that we will go through is artificial neural networks. The slide to take from Olaf and Magnusson. And we divide it in first, this have an introduction that we have a describe, describe one type of neural networks. This is called FIFO neural networks. And then we describe an example later. So the idea here is basically we want to emulate the, the capability of a brain to, that it has to learn things. Except, as you know, that any normally gifted person can see, given a few trees, it learns to recognize a tree. So the idea is to learn to create artificial neural, ne neural ne neurons and make them to learn and generalize in the same way that we showed that has done in physiology. And actually, it has, for a while, it was not the most popular method, but given the new deep learning methods, it has been extremely popular the last few years. So we have, as you probably heard about, it was for the first time you can have a machine to beat a human in master in Go. And uh, that was just done by learning, looking at examples of games, not by telling, the, telling it how to do things. So the idea of a neural network is basically you have a lot of inputs. There's some way in a neuron that calculates these inputs together, normally by adding them together with some weights, and then you put out an output function. And then the trick is that there are many, many of these inputs, and you have hidden layers. So you have, in these cases below here, you have maybe seven inputs, and uh, one hidden layer with four neurons and one output. And the new deep learning networks have many more layers. They often have two or three, four or five layers, and there are different connections between them, and many, many inputs, thousands or even millions of inputs. So this is kind of similar to how a neural network in, in, in a neuron works. So basically, a neuron has a lot of inputs, so you got some signals somewhere, has a synapse, and then it sort of adds this signal together, and if it passes below some sort of threshold, it sends out an output, so which is a release of uh, ions or something, so it, it fires. So, and then of course, this is, uh, you can formalize it in the same way to this neural network, you basically have input and output, Actually, was, they can go both ways, and you can have very complicated patterns. But most of them are, what we have here is a uh, feed for network, so basically all the in in input goes to one you have input, hidden output layer. That's a common way that we describe in biology, and it's most frequent used for network. So, you have these layers here, and here we only discuss one hidden layer, but you could have more. So basically, for the, the neural network function is very simple. You can have a simple, which basically it just takes the sum of the inputs with some weights, and then it decides how an output. You can have a just a binary cutoff, like a, uh, or you can have a more smoothly neural function that's often a bit more efficient, but it's quite binary also. Or any other function you want to have there. So a classical problem is the, to solve here is the XOR problem. So the XOR problem. It's basically that you certainly know from your logic is that you should have a one if it's one if the one input is one and one input is zero, but you should have a zero if both inputs are zero or both inputs are one. So you can demonstrate it, illustrate this as, as kind of an um, in this graph here you have the x and the y num values. If they are in the black positions, you should have one as output, but if it's in the white ones, it should be it should be a zero. And, and you can see that there's no linear function that can separate them. Because there's no way you can decide a, a single, simple linear function that actually can separate these two groups together. So you need to have, so you can't do it by just adding numbers together. But if you develop this neural network here, you can do it. So you define some cutoffs here. And uh, if the cutoff is one, you will have an input layer. You have output. So basically, you see the, all the inputs here are multiplied by a factor of one, and then you have in the hidden layer they have some thresholds. So basically, if it's, it, you, you, it's, you subtract this number from it, and uh, you then have a fa f if it's above zero, then you get an output which is uh, uh, one. Otherwise, it's, it's zero, and then it's, then you have another factor you put into it later. 
So if you both inputs are one, in this case, you will have input of two to both of these central layers. And uh, if you then extract minus 1.5 minus 0.5 of this, you will both be over zero. So actually, uh, you will have an output of one to both of it, and then you have minus two and, mi and one. And if I add minus two and one together, you get at one. And you subtract 0.5, and you still over zero, you get an output of uh, one in this case. And you can keep on ca counting all these options, and you will see that you will actually get the full XOR function. Right? So basically, what you do here in, in the neural network is that you want to train it. So you actually put in a lot of data, sequence data or whatever data you have, and then you present both positive and negative examples, and they optimize these weights so that you can recognize the positive and negative examples. And you can actually do what is called back propagation. So if the output is correct, you don't change it, but if it's wrong, you adjust the weights to become better at recognizing these patterns. Yeah, positive and uh, And then you yeah, adjust the weights using what's called the back propagation algorithm, and you can keep on repeating this on for the input examples. And then you keep on iterating this for many, many, many times, uh, hundreds of thousands of different times. 